Hello everyone, welcome to week three. I'll put the link to the video on later. I'm assuming you're going to read this, not just rely on the video, so I don't have to spend too much time on the last week's work, but I will tell you that it was a rough week for everybody. You had to role play, or maybe you had to deal with a client, and you had to know things that you didn't know. Um, if you feel like a web development course shouldn't have included all that, you can go into Course Design Talk and explain why and get that out of your system, because you're never going to have to take this course again, hopefully. But uh, otherwise, uh, I think you all learned a lot. I'm so proud of everybody. I really enjoyed reading your comments, and uh, we'll be looking over your scoping documents in more detail later. But I wanted to make sure to get the instructions for the following week off and in your hands. Uh, people who did the preparation properly did very, very well this week. I didn't get a whole lot of last-minute calls for help from them. So do the same thing this week. Look over this video Sunday or Monday at the latest. Have a hangout with your partner. Talk it over. Uh, submissions. I don't know why people had a problem on Saturday. Uh, you've got to send me a screenshot if you want to help me solve the problem. Because if somebody says, it wouldn't let me submit, I don't know why that was. But just to be safe, from now on, I'm going to always make the due date and the cutoff date a week later. Pay no attention to that. Your stuff is still due on uh, midnight Saturday. Uh, sharing. Gosh, please learn how to share Google Doc. You click on the blue button. You type in the email address, bmoranis at Greenfield Digital. It's always going to be that. I know sometimes I write you a student test or whatever else. That's what I'm looking for. And then change the title of the document to begin with your name because a lot of other people are sending me the same thing. And give me a note saying what it is. Uh, think about what this says here. There's no reason to send it as can edit unless I'm a partner of yours and you're collaborating because you're both contributor level people. If you're both user level people, your partner should not be able to edit, only comment. And the only time you ever want to share as can view is if this is a live document that you're sharing with your client and you want other people to see it and comment on it in a forum, but you don't want to see their comments popping up on a document that you're sharing with the client. But almost always it's going to be can comment. Uh, really great. I've seen some incredible helping happen this week. Uh, Melissa is always awesome, and I will talk about her a little bit later. But uh, thank you for asking for help. Thank you for giving help. Um, it makes me feel so good to see the course start to cook where people are helping each other. Melissa, thank you so much for making that wiki. Let's take a quick look at a wiki under Web Developer Wiki. And there's a table of contents. If there's something that you want to see on the wiki, uh, talk to her. Maybe she'll train you how to do it, which would be nice. Melissa, I hope other people volunteer to be trained to be wiki maintainers. So this week, we've done week one, we've done week two, and now we're in week three. You've got to revise the scoping document based on the feedback from your client, if you have a live client, or from me, if you're doing be the be.com, or from another contributor acting like your client, if you're a user but you're using another site than be the be.com. Obviously, it doesn't make sense to make a contract if you don't know what work has to be done. And obviously, in order to find out what work has to be done, your scoping document has to be formally approved by a client. But a scoping document is not the same thing as a contract. The scoping document describes in greater detail what needs to be done. But the contract just says, what are the deliverables? How long is this going to take? And what are the steps? Um, and if you have two levels of scope, like the Ford and the Cadillac, uh, then the client's going to pick one of those before you go and make the contract. Now you have to ask yourself, how long is this actually going to take me to do? You have to break it down into steps. If I'm going to end up with a site design, then either first I'm going to find a template, and then I'm going to talk with the client about changes to the template, and I'm going to make those changes, and they're going to approve them. Or, if I'm fancy, I'm going to bring a graphic designer in, and they're going to reconceptualize a whole new site, and then I'm going to go and do an HTML, CSS version of that site as a template, and then I'm going to modify that template to be WordPress. Much, much bigger deal. The steps that you're going to take should be articulated in something called a work breakdown system. If you don't do that articulation, then if it isn't clear what things are going to happen when, you can get out of phase with the client, and that can be a problem because the client thinks that they should be this far along and they're only this far along, or that they should have spent this much money uh, by now and they're actually spent this much money, all that kind of stuff. So you're going to get your feedback from your client on the scoping document. 
you're going to convert your scoping document to a, into a contract with a work breakdown. And then there's an optional step, whereas uh, if you are a contributor, or even if you just are ever going to be doing web development work or online work ever in your life, you got to start having time trackers to track your time. Okay, now here's the pep talk on scope creep. That's when the scope, the amount of things that you're going to do, ends up getting larger, but the money that you're going to get paid doesn't, or the amount of time that you have to do it doesn't change. You want to avoid that. Um, the lowest risk for developers means the best way it is for you is if the client always pays you in advance for your work. Uh, if, you're gonna, if you want to be paid $50 an hour, tell the client, well, by the hour I'm $65 an hour. But if you want to buy in bunches of 10 hours, only $500. So you're going to save uh, $150. The client says, oh great, I'm going to do that. They feel they're, they're, they're happy, but you're not working for nothing. And that's a good idea. But you still never want to be in a situation in which your client feels like they're paying you more than they should. And that's all a function of how you communicate with the client as you move along. However, big jobs aren't like that. If I'm going to do a $20,000 website, then that client wants to know exactly what they're going to get, when they're going to get it by. They're going to pay me $10,000 at the start and $10,000 when the site is done and they are very happy. That ensures that they get what they said they were going to get before I get the money that I need. And it also gives me money to start out hiring people to do the work that I need to get done. If you are wrong in what you think it's going to take to make that site, you eat it if you're wrong and if you think it's uh, going to take less than it actually does. I've twice had clients who've argued with me about something later on in the site process and I've had to take them to small claims court. I won one and I lost one. Don't ever try to go to small claims court. It's not much fun. You have to submit all this evidence. It's not much fun. You want to stay out of small claims court and the way you do that is be very clear with your client at every point, we're starting to take longer than we thought we were going to take, or the thing that you've just asked for is not in the scope. You don't get to say, well, I really didn't know what I was doing and I took too much time. So <laughs> never say that to the client and don't build them for that. The other problem and that new developers often have is that the client will say, well, could you just add in a shipping calculator on the online store? And you think, sure, an online store have, have, have to have a shipping calculator. That can't be much more. And then you got into trouble and another 10 hours got lost. Now you're losing money on the job. So that's not what you do. You say, well, a shipping calculator wasn't in our job specs. It's probably going to take another 10 hours if I do that. Do you want me to do it? If there's a contract, you make the amendment on the contract so that they, they know that they're in charge of whether you're doing that extra amount. Here, by the way, is a work breakdown. You have your index. You have your description. These are the hours that you expect it to take or the hours that it did take, the rate that you charge, because different stages may be done by different people and charge different rates, the total, which is the hours times the rate, the milestone, which is when we know that it has to be done, the status, which is, is it done, is it not done, is it in process, completed date. Okay, so that's work breakdown system. Uh, okay, last thing is uh, time tracking. Obviously, if you're not tracking your time, you're not building the skills to be able to estimate how long things cost. And even as a developer, you know, uh, your client account manager is going to say, hey, we've got a client here who wants you to build them a, a widget with a who's he wants it, and uh, I want to tell them how much that's going to cost. So how long is it going to take you to do that, developer? You've got to be able to give them a good number. If you haven't been tracking your time and you can't go back to say, well, that job was kind of like this one, and uh, you know, you're going to be in trouble. So be always, always be tracking your time. So your to-do list for this week is very simple. It's kind of like last week. You get your scoping document approved, which is either face-to-face, -face, a hangout, a phone, document commenting. If you're a user doing Be The Bee, I'm going to provide you a scoping document feedback, which is not linked because I haven't made it yet, but I will. Otherwise, you're going to work with a contributor who's going to act like your client and give feedback. Thank you so much, contributors, for doing that. If you're a contributor, you're going to find your client, call, hang out, or meet, or comment online. And if you can't have that calling or meeting this week, agree when it will happen and complete your scope review report anyway. Because all you're going to do in the report is say, this is when we're meeting or this is when we met. This isn't a big thing like the 
report last week where you had to say, here's how the business review went, and here's how this part went, and here's how that part went. This is just a simple little thing. And 25% of your grade, so it's easy peasy. Now then you're going to convert the scoping document to a contract. I have an old sample contract here. It doesn't follow the format of our template, but it shows you how some people might consider doing things. And this contract was initially drafted by the client, and then I did some work on it. So this is a long time ago, but as you can see, it's executable. There's a place for me to sign, and there's a place for the person from our client to sign. And the client's copy has to make sure it has my signature on it, because otherwise it's not binding for them. And my copy had better have the client's signature on it. So this is not the one that we printed out and got the client's signature on. This is the one that we saved before printing out. Um, so you're going to make a new contract and you're going to submit the new contract as your assignment. You may not actually be able to get your client to sign the contract this week, that's fine, but I want to see it with that executable piece and with the work breakdown. Um, if you're a contributor or if you're planning on going to business or ever doing online work for anybody else, do the harvest stuff. This is going to require a screenshot. I explained to you how to do the screenshot here. And also if you ever have a problem with the course, I would greatly appreciate uh, that you take a screenshot when you share with me the email that tells me that there's a problem. So here's where I explain how to do a screenshot. All right, hopefully that's enough. I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Um, if you are a contributor and you serve as a client for a user, send me an email that says, who did you serve as a client for? And tell me when it happened and who it was, and then I'll give you the extra five points credit. But I know you're not doing it for the credit. I know you're doing it because you're going to learn more having gone through this process a second time, and you love your fellow students. Okay, enough for now.